Hey fam, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So today's video, I want to discuss how you men, yes you men, you husbands, you fiancés, you boys, well really not boyfriends honestly, but <laughs> we'll move past that. Today's topic is how the man leads his wife. Stay tuned. All right, family. So in a couple of my videos, I've actually talked about women being submissive to men. I haven't addressed it like on a large scale, but I've definitely mentioned it more than one time. But usually what I say in a video like that is that a woman will not submit to just any man because we don't know where you're leading us. So this is where this topic came from because I want you guys to understand what it means. Now, is this the end all be all list? Of course not, but this gives you a good idea of how to lead your wife or your future wife, your, um, yeah, basically your wife, because these rule, these rules only apply to when you guys are married. She is not to necessarily submit and follow you as the girlfriend and even as the fiance. Um, I'm not going to go wholeheartedly into what the Bible is saying because I'm actually going to do a separate video for you spiritual guys out there, specifically Christian men. Um, this one is like across the board, but if you are a Christian, I will actually have that video tomorrow. Since this is Tuesday's video, I will do that one for the Christian men tomorrow. So come on back and listen when I talk about specifically about what God is saying and how you should lead your wife. Okay. So today I actually have 15 ways on how you can lead your wife, future wife for any guy out there. Okay. All right. We've talked about this before, but be the man in your relationship and make the big decisions. Have the final say on the big decisions. Ladies, no, we are not always going to agree with what the guy is saying when he makes the final decision. But if he is leading you, if he is basically taking the family in the right direction, then allow him to make the final decision on the big decisions. But that actually leads me to point number two. Men, you have to stand up and make a decision, period. Just make a decision. Because sometimes you guys can be very um, docile, if I use that word for men. Uh, and sometimes it's like, no, baby, you go ahead and make the decision. And you and your woman, y'all going back and forth. I've seen it too many times. Y'all going back and forth. Well, what you want to do? No, what you want to do? Well, what you want to do? Where you want to go eat? Where you want to go? And y'all going back and forth. Dude, just make the decision. Just make the decision. So not only do we want you to make the final big decision or a way to lead your wife, you make the decisions on the, the, the big things, right? But on the things, especially when we don't have no idea and we're just make the decision, make the decision, make the decision, just make the decision. We're not always going to agree with you. So ladies, I'm not saying that you're going to always agree with your man and him taking charge and making the decision. But if he's leading you, he should make the decision. And I even have a honey. God working on me still because I'd be like, <laughs> huh? <laughs> He's still working on your girl. He's still working on your girl. So again, I'm not always going to agree. But if I can see that my husband is usually leading me in a direction that is conducive for us to be healthy, happy, etc., then is he always going to get right? Of course not. He's human. But at the end of the day, if we're going back and forth, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, you do it, you do it. Just, man, just make a decision so we can move on. And then I'm going to have to get over it because when you asked for my input, I wasn't able to give it to you. So when it's time for you to be like, you know what, we're going here to eat or we're about to watch this movie because just because the woman can't decide, then don't be mad on what he decides on. Just roll with the punches, sis. It ain't that serious. It's one decision. But men, you got to make the decision. So we'll know to follow you as the leader. Another way to lead your wife is this is not necessarily um, Christian, but pray for your lady. Pray for your wife. And you can pray for your partner, your wife in any religion. OK. And even if you are not religious at all, like you're even if you're atheist. You can say a quick prayer like, 
Just look over. You can just throw it out there. There, I didn't say God look over her or Jesus look over her or Buddha, whatever. Just look over her. Watch over her. Move on. That's your prayer right there. Makes a big difference. The fourth thing to consider when leading your woman, leading your wife, is to look out for her health. Now, am I saying be her daddy? Uh, no, I'm not saying that because that is counterproductive. And anytime we are being told what to do, this is men and women, we act like little children and put our foot in the sand and stand still. And I'm not about to do say it thing that you want me to do, even if I know it's the right thing to do. I'm not going to do it because you want me to do it. So there is a way to address everything. And if you are looking out for her health, you can just simply make her a salad and you want to, right? Or let's go for a walk. It don't have to be a speed walk or even a run. Let's just go for a walk, right? Go to the gym together. Do some outdoorsy activities together. Just eat a little bit better. Instead of eating that milk chocolate, get some dark chocolate. Or instead of eating chocolate, period, get some fruit or get some vegetables. Look out for their health in that way. But you don't have to tell, you, you know, your wife, girl, you're getting fat. You need to watch what you're eating. Meanwhile, you as the man is eating all the junk food as well. Like if I'm following you as my leader, you have to be the example. The fifth way to lead your wife is the very simplistic question that most of us ask each other anyway, which is how is your day going? But you're not just asking just because that is the next question to ask. You're truly asking because you truly want to know. You want to be the listening ear. And if something is going wrong and she wants your opinion, like to solve the problem, because men are naturally problem solvers. And sometimes we're not looking for you to solve our problems. Sometimes we just want you to listen to us. But ask her how her day was going. Number seven actually goes into number six. So you're listening to what she is saying. But number seven, you're also listening for what she's not saying. So she might be venting, venting, venting. Let's just go with the boss. She might be venting about her boss, about something. And um, whatever that something is, you notice that it's kind of correlating with something else. So that thing that she did not say, you may bring it to the forefront because maybe she didn't even think about it. Like she didn't even connect the dots on that's what's actually going on with her and her boss in that situation. So listen for what she has to say, but also listen for what she does not say. The eighth thing that you can do to lead your wife is to encourage her, especially when you see that she is feeling lonely. Again, that kind of goes into listening to her day. And especially if you know that you haven't been as affectionate as she likes. Take care of that. And affectionate, I don't mean affectionate leading up to sex, but affectionate. Give her a hug. Give her a kiss. Kiss her on the neck. Play with her butt. You know, I was talking about the butt. Actually, I haven't talked about it a while. Smack that butt. Give her some attention. But it keep encouraging her. Like I told you guys not too long ago when I was feeling kind of nervous about being in front of more crowds, how my husband was like, oh, baby, we got your back. You got this. Go on, do it. So he was encouraging me. It made me feel good. and also made me feel like, OK, I can do this, number one. But then also he got my back like he really has been listening to me. And I'm not just spewing out all of this stuff just for myself. And he's not a person who's sitting there like, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, he's texting or meanwhile, he's, you know, playing his video game or whatever it is. He literally is giving me his undivided attention so I can get whatever I need to get off of my chest. And he actually laughs and jokes with me about this thing that I'm about to say, which he's like, so if I didn't listen to you, would you let me get away with that? And I'm like, so he's like, exactly. So I need to listen to you so we can move on. So he gets it. <laughs> Sometimes we women, we just need to get it out. And we know that y'all are not as, as talkative specifically about like our issues, feelings and all that stuff. Like, don't get it twisted. Super side note, men talk just as much as women, but about different things. Like you'll talk more about sports or, you know, whatever it is, fishing or whatever your passion is, but it's not necessarily feel your feelings. So just, just a side note, y'all actually talk just as much as we do. Just not about the same things. That's the difference. The ninth one, I'm coming in so y'all can understand this one, fellas. Okay. <laughs> um, 
don't ever verbally say the words that you have to submit to me because I'm the man or you have to follow me because I'm the man because you're going to absolutely get some pushback on that. We as women, we already know our role. Now, whether or not we want to play along is another thing, but we already know our role. And so just like I talked about the, 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 the adult turning into the child. As soon as I hear you utter those words that I have to follow you or I must submit to you, best believe you get an opposite. Best believe I'm about to do my own thing because I don't need for you to tell me that. But me being the woman, me being the quote unquote weaker sex, I already know that. So you don't need to remind me <laughs> like zero percent reminders. And I'm sure your wife is the same way. She already know. So you don't need to remind her. Like 0% reminders. The 10th way to lead your wife is to actually verbally say something when you notice what she's doing for the family. Because we know that in most households still in 2018, the woman is still the primary for the most part. Not every relationship, I get that. But for the most part, a lot of relationships still have it where the woman is the primary. She's doing the domestic duties and rearing the children. And of course, have a job just like the man. So give us some acknowledgement, give us some appreciation, and we can move on. Let's just keep it all the way real, right? That's pretty much the way a lot of households are still running. I'm not knocking it. I do think that it should change at least, <laughs> maybe not even 50%, but it definitely needs to increase more where the man is helping out. Now, again, I do know several men that help out a whole lot more than most men. So it is starting to change. But as it is right now today, October 2018, a lot of women are still doing the majority of the housework, working a full-time job, and rearing the children, doing the homework, etc. So men, y'all can step in a little bit more. And definitely you can start with a thank you. Makes a difference. This actually brings me into point number 11, which is to initiate more as the leader and settle for less. Meaning... <laughs> instead of you being upset that she forgot to clean the dishes, for instance, I'm using that because that's my husband's like pet peeve. <laughs> so instead of him complaining about it now, he initiates more. So if I let the dishes sit in there too many days for his liking, instead of him complaining now, he'll actually just do the dishes. But for me, if I'm not doing the dishes, number one, there, there are actually several reasons. Not that I need to explain, but I'm just saying I don't keep no dirty household. But for them dishes, because I'm still hand washing versus having a dishwasher, that's an issue for me. So I do not hand wash dishes every day. That's just way too much for me. But also because we're both messing up the kitchen and actually it's three of us now since we have a baby. Um, I get tired too. So I need a break. And after I've done everything, if those are the only things that need to be done, damn it, they sitting there because I need a break too. I need to sit down and relax like everybody else too. I'm not one of those people that's going to go, 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 kill myself and everybody else is on chill mode and then I'm in the hospital because of some dishes. It ain't that serious for me. Do I do them? Yeah. But if it gets past his threshold, he'll go ahead and initiate and do them now. Number 12, as the leader, yes, come on in, my brother. As the leader, a lot of times you should be the first one to say, I'm sorry. And I know that kind of stings like, why should I be? But leaders actually make the first move a lot of times, especially when they are not the ones who have done the wrong. Now, am I saying that this needs to be like an every time thing? No, but I am saying that by and large, as the leader, you want me to follow behind you, your footsteps, you know, be more submissive, submit to you, etc. You have to be the leader in every aspect of the relationship and not just choose the areas where you want to be the leader. When it's beneficial for you, that's when you want to be the leader. No. So as the leader, 
if I'm wrong, you want to get the relationship back on track faster, you could be the one to say I'm sorry first. And then we can have a discussion about X, Y, and Z, what went wrong, why you felt the way that you felt, why it went down the way that it did, etc. cetera. But you could say I'm sorry first. Number 13, learn how to lead from other men. Absolutely learn how to lead from other men, especially men that you admire. Not those schmucks out there. Not the ones who are out there cheating with every woman that passes by. I'm talking about the ones that you are kind of like, dang, they still doing it. They actually still in love. They happy. Those are the men that you go and ask questions. Get some guidance. Learn from them. What are they doing right? How, do, how are they keeping their relationship healthy and happy? That's who you learn from. The men that you admire. And it does not have to be a family member. Because I don't want you to get twisted like I'm not surrounded by anybody that's in a healthy relationship. No, it could be people that you know from afar. And you know what? You could just go out of your way and, and strike up a conversation with them. Because these are the tools that you're trying to bring into your life to learn how to be an effective leader to your wife. Number 14, uh, my lighting is changing, so I'm going to wrap this up. Number 14 is to look out for your wife's mental health by just giving her time to relax. Run her a bubble bath and actually let her relax in that bubble bath for a period of time with no interruptions. If you have children, then you take on the children. But she needs to get her mental health under control so she can better serve the family, so she can better serve you. So look out for her mental health. Let her have the days that she needs. If it's a manicure, if it's a pedicure, if it's a massage, if it's a walk, if it's a run, if it's a hike, let her have that time. Number 15, again, my lighting is just getting very horrible. So this is the last one anyway. And it's just to let her know, find little ways to let her know that you are there for her, that you care for her, that you love her. It's always the little things that stand out and that we remember. Yes, we remember the grandiose things as well, but the ones that we really sit there and ponder and like, man, I got a great relationship is the little things. All right, fam. Thank you so much for listening. Like I said, I am going to do the spiritual way on how to lead your wife tomorrow. So definitely come back for that. There is nothing that you can do about it. I love you guys so, so much. I love coming here and speaking with you guys and just sharing my knowledge because here at I Love Me, Me, especially if this is your very first time here, of course, think about subscribing because again, here at I Love Me, 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 I'm supplying you guys with all of the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships. All right. See, creating happy, healthy, romantic relationships. I will see you again tomorrow. Deuces.